Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello everyone and welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, the show where you get your questions in, often property related, and we will give you our best attempt at a good answer. And we have rolled this concept on now for, well, hundreds of episodes. So let's keep this show on the road by reminding you how you can get your questions in to the show. Yep, so, so easy. You just have to go to propertyhub.net slash ask. And from that page, you can send us a voicemail. You'll find our phone number if you want to go old school. Or you can submit a written question for our Sunday Times column. All those methods wrapped up for you in one place at propertyhub.net slash ask. And one person who found his way to that page is Musa. Hi, Rob and Rob. It's Musa here. Thanks for all the great content you've put out over the years. I found it really helpful and it's really helped me to propel on my property journey. Just wanted to get some thoughts from you guys around investing in flats with cladding. Flats with cladding now come with EWS1 certificates, but I wanted to get your guys' opinion on whether flats with cladding are still frowned on and whether they would still hold their value given the recent issues with cladding. Does EWS1 negate those issues and would they do well in terms of capital growth in the future or would you advise to steer away from any system built or flats with any cladding on them? Would really love to hear your thoughts. Thanks very much. Thank you for your question. There's a few things going on here. So the simple bit is that if a block has an EWS1 certificate, then there is no problem. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Nobody saw the current issues coming in advance. But as things stand, if the EWS1 has been issued, that's always going to satisfy any lender. And that means there should be no impact on its value because when that property comes up for sale, anyone should be able to come along and buy it without having financing issues. All good. But you also mentioned capital growth around this type of property in general. And what we've been seeing recently is that apartments have actually been growing in price more quickly than houses. And that's for a few different reasons. Firstly, it's because of higher mortgage rates, people's budgets are under pressure. Therefore, they're going for smaller properties than they otherwise would have done. It's also the rebound of city centres in general. And it's because when we had the COVID-related race for space, houses went up in price by a disproportionately high amount. And so now it's coming back into alignment. People have this idea that capital growth is better for houses than flats. But if you go back and look at the land registry charts, going back as far as you like, you'll see that they're actually pretty much always the same until 2020 suddenly had this big gap open up and that gap is now being closed. So if you're looking at city centre flats in general, looking out over the next few years at least, you may find that they have better than average growth potential. But of course, you need to be choosing the right asset in the right place. And as an extra twist, If you're feeling particularly brave and you've got access to some cash, there's also an opportunity in buying up flats that don't have an EWS1 certificate yet. This is very much one from the very risky pile, but because at the moment the ability to get finance against those is restricted, and sometimes there are looming repair bills that are uncertain, they are very hard to sell, and therefore if you're in the market to buy one, you can get a very good price. Wait for that uncertainty to pass, the situation's resolved, and suddenly you get a big bump in your value. Like I say, not something that I've personally done, not something that most people should be doing, but there are people out there doing it. So I just thought it was worth mentioning as part of this question because it's an interesting little angle. But Musa, thank you for your question. I hope that helps. Next up, we have a question in from Thomas. Hi, Robin Rob. Thanks very much for the great content you're putting out every week. It's really helping me learn a lot about property. My question today is about how to properly value a new build uh, properties in an area where there hasn't been kind of equivalent properties in terms of new build in recent times. So all the properties in the same area will often be significantly cheaper than what the developer wants. And I don't really know how to value these. Thanks for your help. Thomas, thank you for your question and really helpful. I'm sure you're not alone. I'm sure many other people have had this question as well, which is why I love this show. You're not just helping yourself, you're helping tens of thousands of other people as well. So Let's help. Well, you shouldn't really treat it any different to any other property. And I'll explain why and then how you do it. So the why is there's a misconception that there's a new build premium, which new build properties are overvalued. And that can be true, but it's not always true. Because what you need to do is assess it on its merits and look for comparables. Now, in your question, you've stated, but how do you look for comparables? Because if you've got a brand spanking new property, 
and nearby there's no brand spanking new properties, then it's not a like for like because the new property will probably attract a higher rent just because it's all shiny and new. It won't need any money spending on it. It's probably a little bit more modern. So there will be a justified premium against a normal property if that normal property hasn't been refurbed to a really high standard as well. So that's the first thing to say. Well, actually, there's an easy way to go about this in most circumstances, but I'll explain when it's hard to do. I would want the developer that you're looking to buy from to produce contracts to say, okay, here is the sales price we've achieved on this site. Because if you're getting into this site when it's built or even off plan, normally there are other sales that have happened. Now, if that has happened, then it's perfectly reasonable to request from the developer proof of their selling prices. And this is something we do with Property Hub Invest. It's not common, but it's not cheeky. It's fair enough. If they're saying a value is a number, then you say prove it. Show us sales at that level. When they produce the evidence, and it's got to be more than one property, when they produce that evidence, you can say, okay, well, there's been numerous people here that have been willing to purchase at that price. So therefore, that's the value. And the reason it's the value is a property is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. Property in London isn't higher than, say, Middlesbrough because the people in London just want it to be higher. It's because people are prepared to pay higher. And it's the same with a new build. If there are numerous people who have gone in and purchased a property and they believe the value of that property is worth more than the properties nearby because it's of a higher standard and facilities and whatever else, then it's been justified. The market has been proven at that level and that can give you confidence to go forward. The challenge of this is when the property is off plan and you are first in, then it becomes a little more difficult. Normally, those properties are in city centres. So in city centres, there should still be comparables, whether it be other new builds or properties that have recently completed. We're, that's where you should be looking for your evidence. So it's actually easier to do in city centres. It's rare to be buying off plan on a development in suburban areas and being first in. And if you are first in, then you may want to be cautious, not because the value isn't true, but just because you haven't got the evidence yet. But in city centres, that evidence does exist. I've seen a few times when this hasn't happened and I've still invested. And that is when a development at off-plan stage has facilities that are so much further on than everything else in the area that I've had confidence to say, okay, I can understand why this property will be valued more. So I can think of a property I invested in Manchester. It had a swimming pool, indoor tennis court, roof gardens. It was one of the best developments in the UK, never mind Manchester. And it came at a slight premium to all the other new builds in Manchester. But I believe because of those facilities, it would be worth more. And I was proven to be correct. But remember, a concierge service and a small gym isn't groundbreaking. If you do that, it needs to be something that is leveling up the area and the offering. It is something that is a level beyond what's being offered in the area. That's a quite niche example, and it's not going to happen very often. But again, it's just worth you knowing all the scenarios. So Thomas, quite a comprehensive answer there. It's not always a simple solution, but it is possible with a little bit of work to establish a pricing level on a new build property. Good luck. So that is us done for another week. If you've got a question of your own, remember you can send it our way at propertyhub.net slash ask, and we'll see you back here for the Property Podcast on Thursday. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>